Now, we've, uh, we've looked at models, um, we've looked at uh, evaluation criteria. Um, we have some additional documents that sort of extend from this, and as a matter of fact, the evaluation criteria are often considered part of what are generally referred to as security frameworks. Now, uh, some of these are standards, some of these are guidelines, some of these are, um, in a sense, sort of complex algorithms to um, break down your business into smaller chunks so that you can address the security issues in, in different areas. Uh, some of them deal with um, risk management and are uh, addressing... Um, uh, processes for uh, assessing uh, the, the risk in certain situations or, or of the, the business overall. Um, there, are, there are quite a number. There's a huge number. I mean, uh, the standard joke about uh, the nice thing about computer standards is that there are so many of them uh, it goes in spades for the security frameworks. Um, there are a number and there are more uh, seemingly every year. Um, so uh, they, they are not all the same. They do not do the same thing. And um, there is no uh, one that is best for all situations. It depends on what you... Um, your your business is uh, what your processes are, um, what your your business model is, uh, where uh, you know, on the risk threshold you are, um, you know a, a number of of factors, including uh, what is the security framework, if any, that you are currently following, and. Uh, in that case, it's not a matter of sort of uh, throw that one out and get this one, but find uh, another one that is complementary, that takes a different approach. If you've got a checklist model, um, look for a breakdown model. If uh, you've got, uh, uh, you know, a, a risk process, uh, you know, maybe go for a, a checklist, something like that. Um, I suppose to, to start out, um, the, an, an awful lot of the, uh, security frameworks that we have, um, come from the financial industry and, and, uh, they are not, um, specific to, uh, information security. Most of them are dealing with uh, issues of risk. Um, interestingly, um, the bulk of what they talk about in risk in the financial literature is capital risk. Do you have enough money to get you through whatever kind of problems you face or changing market conditions? Uh, currently, the, the financial markets are in huge turmoil, uh, kind of following along from... Uh, the upheaval um, because of the uh, the pandemic, and uh, you know we're we're seeing really interesting uh, things going on, um, and the issue of you know have you got enough money to to make it through um, that is uh, crucially important to to a number of businesses. Um, now uh, that is something that we in uh, information security have signally uh, uh, neglected. Uh, that, is, that is one of the areas that we don't uh, uh, really pay an awful lot of attention to. Um, the, uh, the risk literature from the financial industry then lumps basically everything that we do into one small category of, of their overall uh, risk assessments. Uh, known as, uh, in their literature, operational risk. And, and operational risk, from their perspective, is, is basically everything else that we do. 
uh, the bulk of what we do. But it does, you know, provide us with uh, guidance and advice uh, for these situations. So um, it's uh, it's good to follow these things. Um, uh, you will see. Uh, well, I mean, there's. Uh, uh, American laws like Sarbanes Oxley or Sarbox. Um, uh, there's uh, Basel, uh, which I believe is up to Basel level three. Um, there is uh, PCI DSS, the, the Payment Card Industry Data Security Standard, which uh, started off as a, a bit of a mess, but um, has uh, become more useful over time as as they've. It's matured. Uh, they have extended it, um, uh, and it's um, it, looking more these days like uh, one of the checklist uh, frameworks. Um, there is also uh, COSO. Uh, oh, I suppose I should I should mention before that um, uh, ISACA and and their COBIT uh, uh, certification and um, ISACA. Uh, these, I mean, they're they're doing systems auditing, but they are doing it from the auditing perspective. They are really a bunch of accountants, so they, you know, fit very well in the uh, financial industry mold. And uh, uh, you know, it's interesting to to look at COBIT, and when you actually go through it, you'll find that it doesn't really deal with any any technical issues at all. It's it's sort of uh, what are you doing? How is it documented? How can you prove it? Now, there's. Uh, COSO. Um, COSO is an acronym standing for Committee of the Sponsoring Organizations and, and finishes off with of the Treadwell Commission. The Treadwell Commission um, was uh, something that came out of the um, uh, huge um, uh, problems with the financial industries around the 1980s uh, with the junk bond market. Um, that, that was, you know, it was a terrible idea anyways to, to package up a whole bunch of really bad risks and because you're dealing with them as a group, uh, people somehow thought that this made them less of a risk and, you know, a whole bunch of people lost their shirts. A uh, bunch of companies went bankrupt, uh, banks were in trouble and the, uh, um, it's interesting to to look at that and and the financial industry was having problems trying to sell stocks to the uh, public because you know once bit twice shy a lot of people gotten burned and uh, people weren't buying stocks and bonds and other financial instruments so the uh, the Treadwell Commission basically was set up to to try and figure out a way to say to people, you know, the, the stock market is safe, you can go in there, it's not a gamble. In other words, they were lying to people. But the, the tool that came out of it, which now gets referred to just as, as COSO, is a, a really interesting um, breakdown framework, which, uh, you know, taking this sort of salami slicing idea, breaks your enterprise which may be very, very large, down into smaller chunks so that you can address the, the threats, the risks, the um, vulnerabilities and, and issues in the smaller chunks. And, and therefore, you know, instead of thinking, you know, how on earth are we going to secure our enterprise as a whole, you start looking at how do we uh, secure our enterprise in terms of communication? How do we... Um, uh, secure this particular office? How do we uh, secure, you know, and it, it does, you know, it has a, a, a structure to, to break down any organization um, into smaller uh, bite-sized pieces so that we can address the risks. And then hopefully having addressed the individual risks, we can then formulate that into a larger security plan. Hopefully, uh, not making too many contradictory decisions so that we can come up with an actual security architecture when we're finished.